Hello and welcome to this uh, demonstration of the lattice Boltzmann method for uh, Poisson flow. So in this uh, short lecture or uh, demonstration, I would talk to you about uh, how lattice Boltzmann method can be used to solve this pressure driven flow, flow problem. So for the problem that I'm going to discuss, we have a constant pressure gradient uh, that the fluid experiences. Uh, we have periodicity on the left and right side of the channel. Uh, which basically signifies that the channel is uh, is infinitely long. Uh, so the you know so the gradient in the direction in along the streamwise direction are zero. Uh, in the notation that I'm going to show you, I will use uh, numbering uh, of you know the index j will be used to denote you know distribute uh, or positions along y. Index i will be used for positions along x. I zero and j zero will mean basically the first node here. Which, which appears here which means uh, and I'm using zero because I'm going to show you the you know a sample code in written in C which can which allows for uh, an array or an index of zero for any uh, array. Uh, further uh, I'm going to use this notation that I will have a total of nx minus or rather nx number of nodes along x and y num nodes along y. So when you see that it's going it's going from 0 to nx minus 1, the number of nodes will be nx minus 1 plus 1. So that becomes nx. And when you go from 0 to ny minus 1, you'll have 0, rather ny minus 1 plus 1 number of nodes, which means it's ny number of nodes along y. What I would also, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to show you here is that this wall, the physical wall, is actually halfway between the fluid node and the solid bound, and the solid node. So this is essentially a concept that I'm using from the mid way or the mid link bounce back or the halfway bounce back. Uh, further in this uh, uh, problem, what we will uh, be using is a D2Q9 uh, discrete velocity set. So the calculation that I would show you would be would be from this selection of uh, uh, of the of the velocities, for which. Uh, let me just remind you again that there are nine velocities, zero being the zero velocity, and then the numbering is as shown here. So we have nine total velocities. Um, to go along now, the algorithm basically would go something like this. Uh, I would show you the code which would basically start with initialization of distributions. So I'm going to say f alpha, and what I will do is I will initialize them as the equilibrium distributions corresponding to zero, uh, corresponding to some reference velocity density. And some zero velocity. Okay. Now at this point we will start the time loop or the convergence loop. It, it's up to you. Uh, I prefer the time loop because it's easy to code. And as a beginner, I think this is the easiest way you can check whether you're getting uh, physically realistic results. The convergence loop will basically mean that you look at you know change in velocity as a as a function of time and see if you know or as as a function of iteration number. And there you can actually see whether the as iterations go on, does the solution or does the velocity really you know change substantially, or if it doesn't change, you can actually uh, you know stop the calculation process. So that could be the two options there. I will go with the time loop as I said. Uh, at this point, in the time loop, we will start calculate the density, the velocity, and equilibrium distribution using Gauss forcing scheme. Well, density can be obtained using zeroth moment, and the velocity that goes into calculation of the equilibrium distribution will, as I'll show, will actually have to include the forcing uh, or the external force, which would be the pressure gradient in this problem. Then, once we have the equilibrium distribution, we will calculate or we will perform the collision step, so where f alpha, which is the current uh, distribution which is the current distribution at some time t will be then moved to the f a temporary variable which is ft alpha so these ft alpha will be post collision distributions these post collision distributions in step 5 will be streamed or propagated so ft alphas will go to f alpha to neighboring locations okay and uh, what you will see in my code is that the periodicity will be inbuilt into the streaming step so what it means is that uh, that I would not be writing a separate function or a separate set of instructions for you know for uh, uh, enforcing periodicity of distribution functions. Rather, I would be using the same loop to be able to enforce this idea that distributions leaving from let's say the the outlet are actually brought into the inlet. So something like that. So I will be using that concept 
and uh, now once periodicity has been uh, is, or rather when once streaming is done we move to the last step which is applying the no slip boundary conditions as i said we will be i will be showing you the halfway bounce back variant in which the wall is going to be located exactly halfway from the from the uh, or between the uh, two lattices so the distance between between two lattice between the wall and the you know this is the physical wall so the distance between the wall and the and the fluid uh, lattice the last fluid set of uh, lattice or the row of fluid uh, nodes will be only delta y by 2 so once we apply these boundary conditions we can then check for convergence if the flow has converged then we basically stop the process and we write the data to a file otherwise we can go back to step 3 increment the so step 3 would mean increment the time step time step will basically become t plus delta t then and then we do the same set of operations again until we get some sort of convergence so this will be the approach that i'm going to show you in my code and uh, remember this is the sort of the schematic that we will be of course we will not see the schematic in the code but this is the sort of problem that i'm trying to solve so we have nx number of nodes along x and ny number of nodes along y now one thing that i should also mention which i failed to do here uh, this last set of rows which is j is 0 and j n y minus 1 these two are actually buffer nodes in in the code so these are wall nodes and these are not required for calculation but uh, you'll see how i how how i tackle these uh, nodes in the in my code okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a dummy variable which i'm going to call as uh, isn so some i comma j and this is basically going to store or this is going to be an indicator function which will tell me that if isn i j is 0 then i'm actually on a fluid node and if it's 1 then i'm on a wall node okay so this is something that uh, you will see it, it is not necessarily required for this problem but uh, i find that uh, especially when you go to complex uh, geometries something like this you know having something like this handy always helps in uh, in clear in a clear in, uh, you know implementation of boundary conditions so let's move to the code now so this is how the code uh, looks like and uh, so i have basically have nx is 201 and y is 21 uh, and uh, i have basically the same i have two distributions uh, so f basically stores the current distribution and ft is a sort of like a temporary function and uh, i'm using uh, you know double pointers here uh, or rather uh, you know a pointer in two two dimensions uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to use these uh, ex and ey will be my uh, my directions my velocity sets uh time is basically the number of amount of time steps that i want to this simulation to run recall that delta t is 1 in lbm so that is basically i will run this time loop for 20000 or 20000 times dp dx is the pressure gradient that i'm going to impose on the problem tau is the relaxation time so when tau is pointed that means basically the kinematic viscosity is about 0.1 Uh, rho not which is a dummy uh, den uh, you know is, is a reference density is one in my case you can put any value there it it really won't change uh, your results uh, any any which way and uh, feq9 basically is the is a is a distribution or the linear array in which i store uh, the dist the equilibrium distribution values at any given note at any given location so i did not store them over the entire uh, space i basically calculate them locally and then just uh, overwrite them at every location okay so so this is how it goes uh, the height of the channel now is something that you will need to understand so if i go back to the original figure the height of the channel which is this height you can now see that there are ny nodes so the address of the last node is ny minus 1 the address of the first node is 0 so the distance between these you know between the two physical walls would actually be so this distance should actually be distance between this node to this node plus two times of delta y by 2 because remember this distance as i mentioned is this distance is delta y by 2 which would also be here so i need to do two times delta y by 2 plus the distance between these two nodes 
So if you calculate that, what you should get is ny minus 1 minus 2 times delta where delta is 0.5. So I'm counting delta as half. So this becomes ny minus 2. This is the total height of the channel. Okay. Uh, now we also look at the velocity. So the discrete velocity set that I'm going to use is, as I said, it's nine velocity. So zero corresponds to zero velocity. One corresponds to you know velocity vector along x. Two corresponds to velocity vector along along positive y. Three corresponds to minus x. Four corresponds to minus y. And uh, finally, we also have uh, you know the diagonal vectors, which are defined in the same fashion. Now, what we also require are the weights. These weights are ones that appear in the equilibrium distribution function and the calculation of the force. So the weights would be four by nine for if the direction is zero. Between one and four, it's one by nine, and between five and eight is one by 36. So if you add them together in, by multiplying the number of directions, you should get the total sum to be one, which is one way of verifying it. Uh, I also use a variable KB, which uh, is is not very you know uh, critical here but just for as a uh, programming you know you know option i basically store the direction in which so if i if i have a direction a the direction opposite to it is stored in kb okay and this is this basically helps me in uh, identifying or you know looking at the directions along which the bounce back uh, rule will be applied so so finally we come to the initialization part so initialization basically requires me, as I said, I initialize ISN, which is a, which is an indicator function, right? So this is sort of like an indicator function, uh, which is equal to zero for fluid and one for solid. So this indicator function will store, you know, so if it, it's, I assign it to be zero, but what I do is when you have J zero and J and Y minus one, which are the two dummy layers, or the two buffer layers, I make them, I make this function as one. And then what I do is I assign an initial value of equilibrium, equilibrium distribution function to all locations. So you have WTA into rho naught as the initial value that corresponds to, that corresponds to, to zero initial or zero velocity. So you may verify this by calculating it from the equilibrium distribution. Now here we have the time loop. So I start with the first time step and up to the total time, which is 20,000 and I will keep incrementing. So it's a for loop that I'm using. You could use a while loop or a do while loop depending on, you know, which convergence uh, you want to enforce or which form of uh, getting a converged solution you want to, uh, you're comfortable using. So we visit all fluid locations. So that is the reason J is only from, you know, one to N Y minus two. So I avoid the wall nodes here. We start with, you know, we want to calculate local variables, local density, local velocity. So we start with initialization to zero. You use the zeroth moment in the first moment to calculate, you know, rho and u, at which point I also include the force in the, uh, you know, in the, in the velocity. Now force is only included along x because this pressure gradient is only, only along x. There's no force along y. So dp dx by two comes in into the velocity and then you divide by density to get, uh, uh, you know the the y and the x and y momentum so in case uh, you know this is something which you may not be familiar with the scheme that i'm using is it calculates velocity as summation f alpha c alpha or all alpha plus f delta t by 2 so as i said for this the force is only along so f is only along the x-axis so there is nothing that appears in the y momentum okay so this is what we will have then uh, now uh, at this point you can calculate the velocity the velocity square which would be used in equilibrium distribution so I calculate that uh, we do this first one would basically is just is just c dot u which is calculated term two is c dot u square both are which are required in the equilibrium distribution so you can see here if equilibrium is written here in terms of these term one and term twos now we also calculate the source term which, which is based on the go scheme so the entire expression is here um, i would uh, encourage you to try and work this out and see why it is the way it is that i've written here then then comes the collision step in which the post the unknown distribution 
the known at, at a given time is transferred to a dummy variable ft okay so this is what is the collision step at this point i end the for loops so i have scanned after i have scanned all the position and i have performed collision at all the steps or at all the positions we then go to streaming streaming is essentially propagation and in this case i have implemented periodicity into the streaming step so please note the way i have written the locations at which the distribution is going so this is more like a pushing operation so i'm pushing out distribution from a location ij to a new location iaj along direction a so that is streaming in which periodicity is inbuilt now we get to boundary condition so this is also this is where we are enforcing bounce back so now what we do is we go to you know each uh, fluid location because is and ij is zero we go to each fluid location and we look at if a particular fluid location has a boundary as a as an as a neighboring node so what it means is if i look at i and j which are which are i minus ex and j minus eya so this is a this is a different definition from what i used in the streaming step i check if is and ia j is equal to 1 which means that the neighbor from which you know uh, i need to pull the distribution is actually 1 and that again should be the should be the uh, that neighbor is what should be supplying me back some distribution so i'm going to send the distribution that just went from the streaming step so some distribution that been propagated into the solid so those distributions now have are being brought back into the into the fluid domain again and again this should also include periodicity because some distributions may actually leave at you know from the inlet and go to the wall so those are that that thing is already accounted for in this in this step so and this is of course the most critical and the i would say the most difficult part of this entire uh, solution process so if you can figure this out i think then uh, it makes it uh, much much easier to work uh, to work out uh, or to get the correct flow field so this then closes the time loop so at this point i have closed my time loop i have done all the steps as required and then all i do is once i have run through the entire uh, you know calculation process at the end of it i write whatever are the velocities and densities into a file and then i do post processing post processing would here mean that i would look at uh, the flow field so what i would do now is to show you the answer to this problem so this is what the flow field looks like here i have plotted the velocity on the x axis uh, the coordinate along y axis the y coordinate and i expect that it should be a parabolic profile so i have also plotted the or written down the analytical solution to the problem so you can see that the analytical solution is given by the line which is a parabola and the lbm lbm solution which is given by these symbols is also matching very closely with the parabola so this is how you can actually obtain a very basic solution using the lattice boltzmann method and it doesn't take much time in fact it hardly takes a minute to obtain this kind of solution using lbm and uh, you know it is uh, fairly easy to do so uh, i hope that uh, you this this lecture or this this demonstration would have helped you in uh, understanding some basics of lbm and uh, at least getting the first codes uh, you know implemented and uh, i hope that uh, you know this will also allow you to write uh, much more complex uh, versions and again as i said this is not the only way a code can be written in lbm but this is sort of like my interpretation uh, if you have a better one please uh, you know it you should definitely try it out and see if you can obtain the same solution so thank you for listening and uh, see you next time